Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yu YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. If this is your first time, welcome to the channel. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further into this video so you don't miss this great content going forward. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. I don't know why you're back again because this content is fucking garbage and I have no idea why you would subject yourself to it without a good reason. But anyway, we are here for the UK and European market watch. So we're going to take a bit of a look at the movements on the market, which is very different here to how it is in the US, which is what you normally see covered on YouTube. We're going to be taking a look at a wide variety of different items. If you've seen our previous market watches, you'll have seen some of the bits that we're going to cover today. And we're going to have a look at how that market has changed somewhat over the last few days. Uh, we're going to be looking at some new parts, some reprints, some uh, one-time print cards and a bit of other stuff too. I'm not going to go into too much detail now though. I'll stop fucking waffling. Let's get stuck in to the market watch, shall we? Okay guys, so let's start off with pretty much what we started off with last week. Uh, we're looking at Super Dreadnought, Rail Cannon, Juggernaut, Lieber. Um, this card's continued to rise and rise over the last few weeks. We've seen it go through the roof. It's now settling anywhere between the 25 and 30 euro mark, which is not really much less than it was last week. However, it does indicate that it is starting to slowly come down. But I do think that this is going to be a gradual decrease over time. So if you do have these now, it's probably a decent time to sell up. I don't think it's one of those decks that's going to see longevity in its play. But of course, I could be wrong. I mean, who the fuck am I to tell you what decks are going to be good in the future? But honestly, if this was me, I would be selling up any copies of this that I have in my hands. Next up, we're taking a quick look at Eldritch, the Golden Lord. As we can see, this has started to plateau now, actually. It does seem like it's sat pretty solidly around the 65 to 70 euro mark, as it has been the last week or two. And it does look like it's going to stay there uh, for the time being. It is topping most of the online events that we are seeing. Uh, and, you know, we'll continue to see that data coming out. It is like one of those decks that people seem to be wanting to pick up because it can grind really well. The question is whether it will continue to do this in the standard format once we are playing physically. And who knows how long it is before that is again. This will inflate the prices somewhat because we have a limit limited data source however the fact that top players are flocking to this deck will indicate that it is likely to be good in the future too next we're looking at adamant to pay a researcher again just to see where this is at it does again seem to have plateaued much like eldritch has around the 40 euro mark now uh, and it looks like it's set to continue to stay there this deck is incredibly powerful it's really really in fact it's probably the best combo deck of this format at least for the time being and we are going to take a look at some of the other support that is seeing play and that people have sort of tipped me off about that they'd like to see the prices on to see how those are getting on so in line with rock support we're taking a quick look at weeping idol which doesn't really seem to be doing all that much it's still buttons so if anyone's looking for this out there i would get it it's two fucking cents to be honest with you i was also asked to look at go 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 gigas i fucking hate saying that <laughs> uh it's it's anywhere uh, the, the the price is very huge. I mean, we could see them as cheap as 10 cents, but obviously including your packaging and that kind of thing, it's probably likely to be a little bit more. The overall price guidance is around a three to four euro mark, uh, which is actually shot up in the last week or so. So actually that is quite a hike in that time where it's gone from being less than one euro all the way up to three or four. That's like a 300% increase, which is pretty insane to be fair. Next, we're going to take a quick look at some of the Dragon Maid cards. Of course, we can only do a limited amount of data on this. I did want to take a look at the Starlight Rare. However, the actual overall trends and stuff aren't really available on card market at the moment, uh, purely because it's it sort of not really cracked all that much at the moment. So it's a pretty hard thing to look for. We are looking at the Secret Rare version, though, which does have a price trend on there, which is sat at around a €17 euro mark. I do think that this is probably where it will stay now. It seems to have plateaued off of this over the last few days. Um, so I don't think we're going to see it drop much more than that. However, there is some movement on some of the other cards in the set as a whole. Another one of the Dragon Maid cards from Eternity Code. This is settling around €3. Euros and 40 cents. We're going to take a look at some of the other Dragon Maids and see how they're getting on to. So next we have Kitchen Dragon Maid from Mystic Fighters, which is, well, it has been yo-yoing over the weeks and weeks, but obviously with this new support that's come out, we are seeing it sat at close to the 30 euro mark. 
Do I think it will dip beyond this? It may come down a little bit in the future. However, there is a little bit of hype surrounding this, as there always is whenever there's new support that comes out. There are a lot of people who are starting to think that this deck could actually do quite well as a combo choice going forward. It does seem like Konami are pushing this as an archetype that they want people to play. And of course, it is dragon-based, so that is always going to be popular. And of course, there's the waifu tax as well. Next, we've got Nurse, which again has been yo-yoing all over the place, much like many of the cards on the market at the moment, depending on how a lot of online tournaments are going and as and when we see support getting released across the board. This is currently sat anywhere between 17 and 20 euros, but we have seen it as high as 30 in recent weeks. So it may be one to pick up if you are looking to pick up the deck soon. Now might be a good time before we maybe see another increase in the near future. Next, we're taking a look at a few requests that I've seen across the board. So these may seem a little bit off the cuff. This is just stuff that people have requested to see. So first up, we got Heritage of the Chalice. We are taking a look at the nice rarity version of this, the old uh, Prismatic Secret Rare. Uh, this has, again, been yo all over the place, but in, in reality, it's not a very expensive card. Again, around two cents. We've seen it as high as 50 cents, but, I mean, this is tiny stock stuff. I don't really see that there's any much point investing in this, unless they're cards that you just want to pick up for your collection. I understand that people may want to be looking at this because of the, some of the Noble Knight support that's coming out down the line, but it isn't enough to budge this i'm afraid next let's take a look at smug grenade of the thief this was again another request which we're seeing go all over the place i don't really understand the request here unless i've missed something maybe this has seen some sort of play wildly but it is yo-yoing all over the place from one euro up to about four euros although it is one of those things that i imagine there isn't an awful lot of these in circulation Con considering it's from legacy of darkness there was a reprint in dark beginnings too uh, but this has yo-yoed all over the place we'll take a look at the dark beginnings one as well just to see where that's at and uh, see if there's any difference there okay woof. <laughs> the dark beginnings one is shooting up uh it's gone anywhere from what two euros right the way up to five and it looks like it's on the increase from there it's actually been bought out looking at this these are any english first edition prints in good condition are seven euros or above now to pick up if someone can explain to me in the comments why this has happened i'm completely out of the loop of this one apparently <laughs> why why are you doing this? Next up, we're going to revise one again that I looked at on the previous edition where we're looking at Galatea the Orcus Automaton in Ultimate Rare. Again, this is something that I expect to continue to creep up with Gearsu and the like being uh, released. This deck is starting to see some play again. People picking this up and seeing how it gets on. Personally, I don't think it's still good enough to see play again in the meta, but of course that may change over the coming weeks and months, particularly when we go into the next format as well. And we get more of a shape going on with the format. It is important, again, to note that we are mostly online at the moment. So for anyone who's looking back at this in the future and who doesn't remember the great trepidation of COVID-19, they fucking cucked us and we had no ability to play physically. This is what it does to our market. So Galatea is shooting on up. It is continuing to rise. Uh, and I expect that it won't drop down anytime soon. Equally with Galatea, I wanted to take a look at Dingesu. This card in and of its own right is going to always see some degree of play. It's actually incredibly strong. It's a very, very strong rank 8 option, even outside of the Orcus deck. The fact that it's uh, you know a non-target in send, it has protection built in there. It's a very, very solid all-around card. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see the price on this actually creep up again over time. Because people want to pick this up for their collection. But also the fact that it is a really desirable card to be able to go into as a rank 8 option. We are currently seeing seen it around the 30 to 35 euro mark i do expect that it will sit around there for a little while but it may actually continue to creep up in future maybe back towards the 40 euro mark next up is another request predator plant chimera Raphlesia, which i believe is a super poly target to to get rid of your um Vert Anaconda that's on board. Probably your opponents, I would think. Uh, this has been yo-yoing all over the place between three euros and five euros. It's now settled again around the four euro mark. So not too pricey to pick up. If you're considering picking these up, it might not be a bad shout. It does only have the one print from Fusion Enforcers. And this is a set that we have seen pick up in price over time. In continuing with the Predator Plants, we are now looking at Vert Anaconda again, which has been yo-yoing all over the place. It's around the 18 to 19 euro mark at the moment. I do think this will continue to rise, as I've said, week after week now, especially once competitive play resumes in a physical sense. I do think that we'll see this shoot up. It is a one-time print card. It's a card that was printed 
right before we've had this whole COVID interruption. So I think that by then the prints will be out of run. People will realize that they need this in a lot of decks and the prices will spike as a result. Now is a very, very good time to pick this up. I do think it's only going to go up in the future. Next up, we're going back to that whole train digger fucking thing that people are enjoying at the moment. These weird machines that everyone seems to enjoy. This one has been yo all over the place. Infinitrack anchor drill it has shot up as far as almost 30 euros in recent weeks we are seeing it back down towards the 24 euro mark as a whole do i think that this will hold at this i really don't think it will continue to stay there however people are experimenting with the deck so don't be surprised if it does indeed again spike up i do think though that this is more likely to come down than go back up again Next, we're going to take a look at a couple of Plunder Patrol cards. Again, as we did last week, this was called out by one of my good friends to take a look at these and see what the prices are doing. They had shot up. However, it looks like they're creeping back down slowly again. Whether this will continue, I'm not really sure. There was some new Plunder Patrol support that came out that has definitely seemed to have improved the deck somewhat. However, I'm not really seeing much in the way of competitive viability in terms of results just yet. However, that may change over time. And by the time this video is released, who knows, maybe that will have happened. Whitebeard is currently sat at around the 7 euro mark to 8 euro mark. However, we are seeing those disappear at that kind of price range. So it may continue to sit around the 10 euro mark going forward. Next, we have Redbeard, which has traveled in a similar trajectory. It did spike up and it's dipped down again. However, the overall price mark has increased by about a euro overall. We are again seeing these between seven and nine euros. Don't be surprised if they creep up around towards the 10 and just settle there, much like the other Plunder Patrol bits that we've been looking at. Next, I wanted to take a look at some Light Swarm bits. This wasn't really a tip-off. This was actually just something I was interested to see myself. I have seen a lot of Eldritch builds running a very small Light Swarm engine. And given that it's my favorite deck, there's a little bit of bias here that I wanted to take a look at this. But I thought it might be interesting for you guys to take a look at too. So the prices aren't too crazy on these. I mean, Charge of Light Brigade has always been a fairly expensive card, particularly as a first edition. They are still between 60 and 70 euros as a first edition secret copy from the Duelist Genesis in near mint condition. It is interesting to know, though, that there are considerably cheaper versions of this if you're not too bothered about it being first edition, although that is where you hold your value. You can get these for much cheaper. Next, I wanted to have a quick nose at Ultimate Rare solar recharges now these have yo-yoed all over the place from about 10 euros upwards these are for ones that are in good condition which is actually quite hard to find these in a very very good condition like near mint or above given it's actually quite an old card i mean we're talking over 10 years ago now which is absolutely insane to me that it's been that long i mean this is showing my age of course i'm almost 30 years old and i was a teenager when i wanted to play this deck so that tells you everything you need to know but let's go ahead and take a look at the near mint if they are available on the market and see what the kind of price difference is there Okay, so we're taking a look, and the only one that I can see that is near mint or above is closest to 20 euros. So you're looking at about 20 euros a piece at the moment for an ultimate rare first edition charge light brigade in near mint. Or, of course, if you're happy to go for just a good condition, playable at least, you're looking about half of that, which is actually not too bad. Don't be surprised, though, if we see those near mint ones disappear off the market soon, where people are trialing out some light swarm goodness in a competitive meta deck. We're also seeing Raid and Season play again, just as a one-off in these decks. And no surprise, it hasn't really hiked up much. They're less than a euro, anywhere between 10 cents and a euro, depending on condition, place you're getting it from, all of those kind of things. It's not really moved much on that. This is the Ultra Red, the Super Reds. I did take a quick look at, and they were around the same sort of price range. Next, I wanted to take a quick look at Lila in Ultimate Rare as well. Again, yo-yoing all over the place. Anywhere between 5 and 10 euros seems to be the going rate. In good condition, in, in first edition, you're looking at around 5 euros. For a near mint, anywhere from 10 euros. Let's take a bit look further down just to see what the rest of the trend is. Okay, so depending again on where else you get it from, they can go right the way up to about 15 to 16, maybe even 17 euros a piece. So I figured while we're at it, why not have a look at CP Lumina? We're looking at high rarities anyway. So CP Lumina, anywhere from 80 euros and above, that's just in good condition. You're looking at closer to 100 euros to even up to 150 euros a piece to get these in near mint condition. No surprise that these have held value. These are well known as one of the more expensive cards in the game from a collector standpoint, especially for Light Sworn fans. 
And it wouldn't be fair of me to cover Light Swarm without taking a look at our good friend Judgment Dragon. So the prices on this for a first edition, anywhere from good condition or above, is around the 44 euro mark and, and upwards. Uh, this is something that actually holds quite a good value, to be fair. I was quite lucky to pick mine up for around the 20 euro, 25 euro mark. They were in good condition, not near mint. But to actually see them at this, this is actually not too bad. Don't be surprised, though, if more likely you're going to be paying towards the 60 euro mark for these. And we will take a look at the ultimate rares in just a moment. Okay, so for the turbo pack version of the ultimate rare Judgment Dragon, you are looking at anywhere from around 80 euros upwards for something that's in good condition. And we're going to take a look, little bit of a look down the page here at the near mint versions, which are anywhere from 150 euros upwards. This is not a surprise at all because this is a heavy collector card, something that people will pay a premium for, the likes of myself included in that uh, notification there. So again, don't expect to get these much cheaper than around the 150 euro mark if you're looking for something near mint. If you want something just playable, 80 euros and upwards. And again, one more just for old time's sake. Not a card that you'd really see any play. I have tried to do Light Swan with Honest in there. It just doesn't work. It was just purely for the flex. Uh, yeah, it didn't work out very well. It's fucking dead ass now. But Honest in Ghost Rare, because this is the rarity that you really want this card in, because it's an absolute beauty. And don't get me wrong, it is an absolutely beautiful card. Uh, we're looking at these anywhere from 40 euros and upwards, if you don't mind it being in just good condition. But we're going to go ahead and take a look a little bit further down and see if Near Mints are available. Okay, so there's one near mint on the market, and this is 200 euros. That's what you're looking at for a first egg ghost, honest, in, in near mint condition. We're going to take a look at the unlimiteds, just to see if there's much difference in the price there. It is widely known, though, that, of course, a first edition is likely to hold a better value than otherwise. Let's just go ahead and filter that quickly. Okay, so if you want an unlim in good condition, you can get them anywhere from around 30 euros, which actually is really not too bad. If you just want something that looks nice to stick in a binder or something that's a little bit nicer to play with, it is worth noting that even though the unlims are a reprint, they're not like some of the reprints that we've seen with like Legend of Blue Eyes, where they're super new and entirely different. These were printed very shortly after the original run, but we're going to take a little bit of a look further down. Okay, so if you don't mind it being an unlimited near mint, you can get them for around 40 euros as well. So for those of you who want, that, want to pay that premium for something that will hold its value long term, you're looking at a considerably higher amount. But for someone who just wants something to play with, a very reasonable 40 euros and you can have yourself a nice copy of a Ghost Rare Honest. So hopefully you've all enjoyed today's market watch. Hopefully you've had a bit of an idea of how the market is shaping up here in Europe and how different it is to the US market, which again is predominantly what market watches on YouTube cater for. Hopefully this will give you some ideas about investments you should be making or cards you should potentially be selling up, especially considering we're at a point in time where there is currently no ongoing competitive play in the physical sense, mostly just online. Thank you very much again for checking in guys. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.